Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome. I'm, I hope you all get in close and kind of look at each other's faces once in a while, just so you feel that connection. And today, make sure your blanket or blocks are nearby. Okay, and once you get to your bed, we're gonna hug in our knees, rock it out a little side to side, and just get a little massage. Maybe look opposite your knees. Just let it feel good. Maybe close your eyes. Remember, when we're in our personal space, when we keep our eyes open, we tend to just get distracted by the things that are in our house and then our mind starts going, well, I need to clean there. I need to pick that up or let it go. Just recognize when you can close your eyes and really draw within or, you know, just find that focal point that helps you find your drishti and draw within and feel that matrix moment inside where you feel yourself front to back, side to side, all the space around you and not the objects around you. So when you're ready, um, you might um, lift your hips, place a blanket or block under your hips. Those of you that like um, something between your shoulder blades instead, um, just sitting up, placing maybe the blanket or block between your shoulder blades and letting your head fall back. A lot of us have been working from home on your devices, so that might be good to have the blanket or block between your shoulder blades. And if your head is too arched, place the blanket under your head. And as always, play with your legs. Maybe your knees are bent and your knees are touching or your knees are wide, feet touching, or your legs are long, all right? Let it be something that's sustainable, a beautiful soft edge for you. Yes, that you can just breathe into. And then we'll all just have a nice big inhale through our nose and exhale out our mouths. Ha. And just feel the presence of the object that um, you've chosen for your prop. And try to melt your body around that prop. Try to just soften around it like you're draping over it. And then maybe begin to feel everything that's touching your mat or the ground or the earth and allow that to just melt into that as well. And let's begin to just breathe deeply in and out through our noses, feel that constriction on the back of your throat. Enjoy watching your breath from beginning to end. Try not to force it. It's so easy to force it right at the beginning, so be careful there. Just allow the natural pauses to happen. Recognize if you're clenching your jaw, soften the jaw. And enjoy just being. Maybe inhale, reach your arms wide, and exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Continue to feel the rise and the fall of your chest. And take this moment to set your intention. Finding something beautiful in the moment, having gratitude for this moment. We'll release it out, set our props aside. Once you do, hug those knees in again, rock it side to side, flex the feet, engaging the legs a bit. Maybe roll the tailbone away from you or hug the knees in deeper. What feels good on your back, your hips today? And we'll work our way to tabletop, hands and knees, a little bit of egg roll, rock and roll, maybe. As few or as many as you like. I like an egg. <laughs> Tabletop. Set that foundation. Feel yourself press away from the earth. That belly strong. A few rounds of cat and cow. Get fluid. Feel the nice transition here. It's traditional or freestyle as you'd like. So tapping into the awareness of feeling the movement in the body, not just the 
poses, but the transitions, how you can get there. And remember, wiggling is good as you transition, that your body find, trying to find your center of gravity, really working hard for the core. So don't get frustrated if you're on a, a softer surface. Have fun with it, fight for it. Just don't clench your jaw. All right, so we're gonna begin with, um, well, if you wanna take it back to a brief child's pose too, just stretching the shoulders a bit, coming up on spider fingers. Press to those fingers, reach the hips back a little bit. Breathing, your forehead may or may not be on the floor, that's okay. All right, not an inhale, slowly round it on up. We're gonna start with our thread the needle kickstand this morning. Inhale, right arm to sky, exhale, thread it underneath, lay down on the side, let your left elbow fall for a moment, and breathe, begin to feel yourself melt into the surface. Nice. And if you want to play, fine, stay here if you like, left hand out from the nose, spider fingers off the mat, inhale, lift left leg to sky. Right. Maybe float that left arm up. If you haven't already, try to stack those hips and shoulders. Press through those right fingernails on the earth. I'm really wiggling here on the scarf, but it's fun. Maybe take that arm behind, give the shoulder a little roll. Maybe bend the knee, seek the foot, curl those toes back. Yes, flexing the foot. Maybe even lift your right foot to sky. Woo! Nice. Breathing, right? On an inhale, open up, exhale along the way. Maybe take that right arm to the sky again, look up. And work it out a little, traditional or freestyle, cat and cow. And I'll just rotate here. And we'll inhale, left arm to the sky, look up. Exhale, thread it underneath. Right arm falls and take a moment and melt. Really surrender as much tension as you can. Recognize if you're even holding it in fingers, let it go. Stay or play, right hand out from the nose. Inhale, lift right leg to sky, exhale, open the heart to the side. Lift the head, lengthen the neck, set it down. Float the right arm up, my toes are pointed. Just activate your foot in some manner so the leg is very active. Maybe take that right arm up behind the sky, the back. Maybe even bend the knees, seek the foot, curl the toes back, feel that difference, that yin and yang, that push and pull like we find in our mind and after pigeon, yes, the mermaid. Maybe lift the left toes to sky. We'll inhale, begin to open up, exhale along the way. Once again, a few rounds of cat and cow. Just let it be intuitive, the kind of movement that makes your body feel good. All right. So from here, we're going into puppy pose, hips over knees, and on an exhale, slide your arms forward. You might come to your forehead, your nose, or your chin. As always, if it's too much on your shoulders, take your hands a little wider. And you might flirt with shifting the hips just a smidge and forward, see if that gives you a little more space. Or maybe you need to take them back. If you need the block or a blanket under your forehead or chin, just recognize. Try to feel the chest opening and sinking more towards the earth. Breathe into it. If you came to your chin, come to your forehead. If it's available, pop on spider fingers, elbows off the floor. Press through those fingers, reach the hips back. Press more through the fingers, feel that spine, telescope open, belly through the spine, and you're breathing. All right, lowering those elbows down, let's work our way up to tabletop. Curl our toes under, and with your exhale, breathing our down dog. Bending one knee at a time, rolling on those toes, pressing away from the earth, hips up and back. Bending knees, straightening, just begin to notice where you feel a little tight. Breathe. Be kind if um, you're really kind of stiff or the muscles are tight, just bend those knees a little extra. You might feel some more space in the back of the legs, the shoulders, the hips, and down dog can feel even sweeter. 
beautiful. So from here, we're gonna inhale, slowly wave it to plank, slow as your inhale. Lengthen the tailbone through heels, feel the back of your neck pressing to the sky. You're barreling through the chest, all right? Breathing, belly buttons drawing through the spine. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And with our next exhale, we'll slowly lower all the way down. Maybe hold that chaturanga dandasana, keep those shoulders higher than the elbows. And then down, ah, give the shoulders a little roll. It's a little wiggle, we're gonna go into our cobra flows. So draw those elbows back and in, toes stay down. Little or no weight on your hands as you inhale, lift your gaze. Exhale, wave it through the throat. Just moving, trying to activate your back, strengthening here through the back side. Yes, just enjoy moving with your breath up and down. All right, hands down, give the shoulders a roll again, elbows back and in, get some wiggle. Light as you can on your hands, inhale up to your edge of cobra. Feel the heart lift. You might even play with straightening the arms a little extra if that's okay in your back. It does deepen the lower back then, so be careful. All right. And with our exhale, we'll wave it all the way down. Curl our toes under, exhale, down dog. Maybe drop a knee and a hip in, releasing the lower back a little, the hips, after that deeper back bend, if you straighten the arms a bit. And we're gonna go to our full vinyasa here. So when you're ready, inhale, wave it to plank. Move slow as your breath. Enjoy the pauses, savoring. Nice exhale, let it go. All right, so we're gonna inhale slowly, wave it to plank again. Bring our left hand a little forward, roll to the left side of our feet. Side plank, hand to hip, press the shoulders back, open the toes, float the right arm up. You can always lower that left knee. Maybe reach the arm past your ear, peel it open. You might even lift your right leg, or the top leg, whichever side you went to. Toes are open. All right. And we're going to bring our right hand down, roll to the other side. Maybe hand to hip first, press those shoulders back. Toes are open, right knee might be down, so lift the left arm up, lift the hips. Nice, reach that left arm past your ear, peel it open. Maybe lift that left leg. We'll exhale, take it down, tabletop. Lift the right knee, take it behind the left, crossing the knees, feet wide, walk the hands to the right. Exhale, those hips back, cross knee child. Breathing, maybe softness or activation, spider fingers, pressing through, reaching the hips back. Breathing, you can draw the nose around. Yes, just try to find an activation, yet a balance with the softness, okay? Nice balance. Never excruciating or overpowering. And on an inhale, round it up. Feel the control here through the belly. Switch legs, lifting left knee, taking it outside the right. Feet wide, hands to the left. Exhale, take those hips back. Once again, softness or activation. Toes can even be open a bit, flexing the feet. Yes, squeezing the legs. As little or as much as you like. Let's inhale, bring it on up. Curl our toes under, exhale, down dog. Ha. Looking towards our hands, walk separate foot, feet between hands. Inhale, look forward and find space, fingers to the shin or to the floor, just peel the shoulders from the ear, feel the spine telescope strong. And exhale, fold all the way through. Feel the drape of your head. Press to the feet, inhale, reverse it up slowly. Look from the heart a little, maybe a little back then. And exhale, fold. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. Shifting your weight to your left foot, looking forward, how controlled and slowly can you reach your right leg back to lunge? Own it, heel will be straight up and back. Get a flat back here. 
maple hinge maybe, and then come up and press and lunge. Lengthen through the back heel, spiral the right thigh forward a little bit, maybe even scoot the right foot back a little further, deepening that lunge a little. Breathing, pelvic floor belly strong. And on our next exhale, we're gonna fly our arms by our side like an airplane, just hinge. Peel the shoulders from the ears, feel it from the crown of the head to the back heel. You're a long line, maybe bend that knee a little more. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, reach, take it down, step back, point through the yasa, meeting in down dog. Remember, if you begin to get fatigued, modify, lower those knees. And slow is hard, so even modifying lowering the knees and going slow is a fun thing to do. Inhale, right leg to sky. Press away from the earth, feel the space, fingertip to the lifted foot. And with your exhale, bend that knee, reach for the left shoulder, press to the right hand. Draw circles with the toes. You might look up under your left arm or even up and under the left shoulder. A little more of a back bend as well as a twist. Breathing, breathing. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, knee towards your right underarm or elbow. You can always do knee to nose. Yes, slow, lift the hips, back heel lifts. Inhale, lift it up, back heel goes down. Exhale, bring it forward. Nice and slow, it's burning, yes, inhale up. This time we're gonna hold it for a count of five. You might even do your arm balance if it's available for four, three, two, one. We'll inhale it up again. Exhale, knee to nose. Tuck it in, maybe touch the knee. Then set the foot inside your right hand. Ooh, flat back, left hand down. Exhale, open your right arm to sky. Feel the shoulders press back, lengthen to the back heel. Feel the back of the neck open, breathing. And you might even do a few slow clock arms here. Yes, we're gonna work towards our bird of paradise today. So we're Give us some nice movement, twisting, to maybe open up all the body parts for that. All right, and just to make it fun, you can either strip, step back straight to vinyasa or hop and switch two to four times. Yeah. And then when you're ready, just vinyasa. Or just meeting in down dog. Nice exhale, let it go. All right, bottom of your next exhale, walk, step, or float. Keep between your hands. Inhale, look forward and find space. Feel the edge. And exhale, fold. Feel the surrender. Inhale, reverse it up. Maybe a little back bend if that feels good. And exhale, fold. All right, spider fingers shifting our weight to our right foot. Out control, can you reach that left leg back to lunge? No worry. Make sure your feet aren't too close like a tightrope. You want space for the hips. You want the feet wide enough. Flat back, playful hinge, inhale up. Press at lunge. Maybe slide that back foot back just a little more. Spiral that left thigh forward. Feel the hips energetically squaring to help you feel centered. Feel the shoulders pressing back. And on an exhale, we'll fly our arms again. Fly that airplane, hands are active. Maybe bend that front knee a little more. Nice. Inhale up, press it much. And exhale, reach. Enjoy this transition as much as any other. Stepping back, vinyasa, moving in, down dog. Audible exhale, let it go, side out, mouth to mouth. Ah. Inhale, left leg to sky. Try not to bend that right elbow and drop in, but press away, hug those arms. Feel the space as you exhale, bend that knee. Reach the toes towards your right shoulder. Maybe look up under that right arm. Draw circles or up and over the right shoulder. A little bit more of a back bend, increasing blood pressure, heart rate here. Nice. Inhale, lengthen the leg. Exhale, 
tell either knee or nose or towards your left underarm or shoulder or elbow, slowly. Inhale it up, right heel towards the earth. Exhale, bring it in, that right heel now lifts as high as it can to help keep the hips high. Inhale it up. This next time, holding for five, maybe your arm balance, four, three, two, one. Inhale it up. And now let's exhale, slowly bring that knee to nose. How controlled can you set that foot inside the hand? Ooh, nice, beautiful. So right hand down, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, left hand to sky. Press away from the earth, reach hand to hand. Breathing, you can look up to the side or down. Honor your neck, lengthen through that back heel. And breathe. Our hand comes down, either straight to vinyasa or a hop and switch two to four times. We're trying to be light. Stepping back, vinyasa, meeting in, down dog. Ah, nice, let it go. Bottom of your next exhale, walk separate float, feet between hands. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold all the way through, feel it, let it happen. Inhale, reverse it up. Maybe a little back bend. And exhale, fold. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold as you step or float. Maybe step with a different leg. Vinyasa. Nice exhale, let it go. Inhale, right leg to sky. Exhale, smoothly knee to nose, feel it. Set the foot inside the hand, find flat back with playful hinge. And inhale up, crescent lunge. On your exhale, let those shoulders soften from the ears. All right, we're working into our warrior three, maybe hands to hips to help with balance. Shift forward, pause, feel your back leg strong, press into your right foot, lift the back leg. Begin to hinge, once you get here, let's fly the arms back. Lifted foot is active, press to your grounded foot. Can you level your left hip anymore? Breathing, breathing, breathing. From here, we're going into standing split. Maybe you can keep those arms lifted and flying for a long time. And then bring them down to your edge, maybe supreme balance, keep lifting the leg, maybe pulse it so you feel it. Breathing. We're gonna bend the knee that's in the air. You might look up and over your right shoulder and see those toes. If it's available, you'll look down and reach your right hand up. That big toe is curling around your fingers. Very active. We'll lengthen the leg again. Press your mid back to sky, flat back. Maybe begin to bring hands to heart, lift up where you're free, and back to crescent. Ooh, I feel that burn on the carpet. Inhale up, but it's not carpet burn. <laughs> Exhale, reach, take it down. Vinyasa, I guess that brings a whole nother meaning to carpet burn. <laughs> ha. Nice. Soften your gaze, feel those finger pads firmly pressing. The arms are hugging towards the ears, yet they're rolling out to the side. The triceps are trying to tuck under. Those hips up and back, feeling tight, bend those knees a little, maybe feel more space somewhere. Beautiful. All right, let's inhale, left leg to sky. Exhale, knee to nose. Up control, can you set that foot down, flat back, playful hinge maybe, and then inhale it up. Crescent lunge, enjoy that exhale. Find your focal point as we shift to warrior three, maybe hands to hips, shift forward, pause, Press through that left foot, lift that leg. Once you get there, fly the arms back. Peel the shoulders and the ears. Maybe level that right hip a little more. And as those arms are hugging toward the side body, maybe slowly begin to hinge. 
Hinge, hinge, hinge into your standing split, releasing the hands down as necessary. Breathing. Spider fingers can help. Supreme balance. You guys know your practice. Have fun with it. There's no rule book here. Bend that knee in the air. Maybe look up and over your left shoulder. Toes are active. Then looking down, you might reach that left hand up. Curl that big toe around the fingers. Breathing. All right, we'll lengthen the leg. Press the shoulders mid back to sky. Maybe hands to heart. Fight for it. Press it, lunge. Inhaling up. Exhale, reach as we take it down. Vinyasa. Nice. So from here, maybe take a sip of water, towel off. We're going to do our inversions a little early today because I have a whole other sequence coming up after to get our heart rate up again in a different way. So remember, whatever inversion you choose, pause, connect with your breath, then slowly begin to set your foundation, pause again, breathe, and try to find as much control and enjoy the control through each process of getting into your inversion. Remember, it can always be legs up the wall, hip lifts, handstand, you know. You guys know me, and I know you. I'm gonna check in with Cynthia here. Oh, hi, Julia, I didn't get to see you come, honey. Okay, Cynthia, what inversions do you usually do, honey? What inversions do you usually do, Cynthia? Shoulder stand. Shoulder stand? Yeah, go for it. I, I, I call it um, inversion playground. I like everyone to have fun and do what they want to do. Okay, so just set it up. Okay, remember shoulder standers. Get those elbows as close as you can together. Work the hands towards the floor along your back. And don't forget to draw the chest away from the neck. I mean the chest away from the chin. You might round a little more through the back, but you're protecting your neck, and it should feel sweeter on your neck. Breathing, is everybody breathing? And if you're in shoulder stand, head stand, play with those legs. Maybe take them to straddle, slow, smooth transitions. Yes, fight for that center of gravity. You can always take a break, come back at it. Nice, Phyllis, I see that. Can you do some eagle legs, Phyllis, in that? Yeah, eagle legs in your handstand, that's a nice. You gotta bend both those knees. Yeah, bend both of them and squeeze and flex the feet. Beautiful. Yes, that throws off that center. Yes. There you go. You just hang in there, Ivney, I guess. Yes, work it. Lengthen those legs and pike them and pull them back up. Lengthen both of them, squeeze them together, lower them about a third down, and then bring them back up. Yeah, maybe take them halfway down, bring them back up. How far can you go and still bring them back up? That's what's really going to amp up that core work. I want to enjoy one with you all. Only inversions I get to do these days and my world being turned upside down. <laughs> so this is kind of fun. Use the back of that leg, Amy. Keep it long. Keep the leg long. Use the back of the leg. Yes, feel it. Feel that. So when we're doing all those handstands and stuff, um, standing splits where I feel that pulsing, that's what we're trying to feel is the back of our leg working, whether we're going into headstand, shoulder stand, um, dolphin, any of it. The leg, the activation of leading with the whole body is key to your inversion. And that transfers weight to your body. 
So take a moment when you're done, just maybe have a little sip or towel off. And we're gonna sit on our mat for a moment before we take it back up. All right, we're gonna do seated Utahita Hasta Padam Bustana, one of my favorite, before we do it standing later on at the end of class. So um, you can have your left knee bent or leg long, it's up to you. Now if you're rounding in your spine, make sure in your lower back, make sure you're seated on a blanket so you have a nice neutral pelvis which is going to allow your spine to lengthen and help you find more space, all right? I think I'll try mine with my left knee in just for fun. My both feet are flexed. We're going to reach for maybe the outside edge of our pinky toe. You might do the ankle, the calf. Some people do the big toe, but just remember, over time, that puts a lot of pressure on the joint, which can lead to arthritis. If you notice, we don't ever press on our joints if we can help it, all right? So maybe extend the right leg. You can bring left hand to hip and find space in the spine. Press away from your foundation. If you need to, you can bring the arm underneath and just get a nice stretch. Now recognize if you're over rounding, that's why we want to lengthen through the spine. Breathing. All right, so from here, we're gonna take our left hand outside the calf or the foot or the ankle and extend that leg across the body. So maybe you do want your leg long to find that edge. Yeah, that feels good there. Take your right arm wide. Nice. We'll keep that left leg long. We'll come back to where we started and maybe take the leg out to the right. Once again, lift from the heart. Feel yourself expand. You should be reaching through that left heel too. Once again, you can hold the cap. And that feels good too. Yeah. Beautiful. So we'll bring it back and release it down. Yeah, give that leg, just give them a little wiggle. All right, so we'll bend our left leg, finding our elbow inside the knee. This is key for when we're standing too, all right? Hand to hip, right hand to hip, and extend the leg forward. Inhale, lift from the heart. All right, and let's follow what we did on the other side. Let's take it across the body. So bring your right hand out. Maybe float the left arm wide. Recognize if you're starting around here. Feel the expansion, nice stretch on that outer leg too. Feels good. Bring it forward, bring that left hand back, and right arm wide, find a nice edge. And can you lift again? Beautiful. And we'll bring it back, lower it down, give it a wiggle. And since we're here, let's find our boat. Okay, feet are flexed a bit. I'll get sideways so my feet aren't facing you, I apologize. All right, lift from the heart, maybe extend the legs sing to you, have our music going, but we can pretend and just have our own little dance party here. Right guys? Jennifer's been having dance party challenge all week on Facebook. So it's kind of fun. And just movement. Remember, we're all always just trying to move anyway. And release tension. Smile. All right, so we're going to hug it in, rock it out a little, look opposite our knees. Oh yeah, get some resistance. Try to roll those legs all the way over, a little deeper twist, and a little deeper massage. Nice, and we're gonna work our way to standing, so maybe a little leg roll, rock and roll. And then coming up standing, all right. So I don't know if you know this, um, there's been a study done that the, the little, the, less that you, the lesser amount that you use your hands to come up when standing up helps in your lifespan. All right, so work on that, okay? It really just helps in your lifespan. Do you use your hands to get up from the kitchen table or the couch? Can you just get up without using your hands? So be mindful with that, okay? All right, so we're starting at the top of our mat here. All right, let's just stretch out our back a little, inhaling arms up, and exhale, fold. Inhale, look forward and find space, and exhale, fold. Let's inhale, reverse it up again, really reach. Shift into your heels and exhale into chair. So if you need to readjust your feet, 
to where you like. Feel free to lift from the heart. Yes, telescope the spine. Try not to just lean forward. Feel the mid back pressing back. Maybe lower the hips, shift the hips back. Lift those toes a little. When you're breathing, you can always take the arms a little wider. You can even release them to hips if it's just too much tension. Maybe even a little deeper. All right, hands together on your next exhale, pour into a forward fold. Uh, let's take here a moment. Maybe bend the knees a little. We're trying to feel our spine drape as deeply as we can. So it's not about touching the floor, it's about just feeling from the hips through the lower back, through the neck and shoulders, a nice deep surrender. And as always, you can massage or hold opposite elbow in front, hug yourself in. Some people really like to bring the hands up under the feet. Yes, breathing. Just enjoying folding. We bend down throughout the day, but we don't always spend a lot of time there, allowing our body time to find space. All right, so fingers to the floor or the shin as we inhale, look forward and find space. Feel the strength, the length, and exhale, fold. Feel the surrender. Hands to the floor, looking forward, step or float. Leading in, down dog. Nice exhale, let it go. Ah. Beautiful. So let's inhale right leg to sky. I'm going to change my sequence a little. Exhale, slowly bring that foot outside your right hand. We're not going to squat. Take your time. Bring it outside your right hand. All right. So front knee over ankle. Slide the back foot as far as it'll go. Lower the back knee. We're going to do some split preps here. So exhale, take the hips back, ideally having the hips over the back knee. Tuck the chin. Inhale, round it forward, maybe track the knee out to the right, roll to the outside edge of your front toes, open the toes. Yes. Just want to open this up a little more for our bird of paradise. We will be doing lizard today as well. Nice. You can always stay forward or back. Some of you have splits in your practice. Feel free to work your way there. I just like the feeling of this stretching and the movement, but don't feel like you have to mimic me. If things still serve you, or you want to work on that deeper hamstring stretch, staying back, or that left quadricep stretch, staying forward. Nice. All right. We are going to work our way to lizard here. If you're in splits, take your time. We're going to come forward. Front knee tracks to the side. That's most important. Toes open. All right, so maybe you stay with your hands up. You might need a blanket up under the forearms. And remember, you can always track to the left with or without a blanket under the forearms as well. And we're breathing. We're trying to relax the wrists and the fingers. Belly's a little strong here. Drawing the belly button through the spine. Nice. But the most important thing, once again, is keeping the knee tracking to the right for the hip opener. It's not about getting the elbows or the forearms down. You want to feel that nice stretch, that inner thigh, into the psoas. Yes, I feel it even in my hamstring a bit there. It's my very tight new side. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, two more breaths here. And we're going to slowly walk it up to our hands, bend the back knee, draw the heel towards you, flexing the foot. Front knee still tracks. Inhale, reach our right arm forward. Exhale, take it up and back. Pinky toe side of the foot. If you don't find that, that's okay. You can still reach or you can roll the right thigh away. Press through that left hand. Look up and back to the left, maybe. Your toes are curling back. They're active on that hand to foot, okay? Breathing, breathing. Nice. All right, we're going to slowly unwind. Curl our back toes under. Lift 
the leg, and we're gonna shift our back heel down sideways, heel to heel, heel to arch alignment. Front knee stays bent, legs as still as you can as you reach that left arm forward, and inhale up, warrior two. All right, I'm gonna rotate this way. Oh, I'm gonna have my back to you. All right, nice. Remember, track that front knee towards the pinky toe. Roll to the outside edge of that back foot. Look at my hip, how it externally rotates in. Zip it up, feel centered. Engage those lower hip points. Maybe lower the hips down without leaning forward. You're looking at your front middle finger. Feel the shoulders soften from the air through that elongation through the throat, the jaw and par lock. Right hand to sky, exhale back, peaceful warrior. Lift from the heart. And maybe you want to find some bending of elbows. Oh, feels good. If it doesn't float your boat, keep how you like, but feel your heart lift up and out of the spine. All right, we'll inhale up, warrior two. Straighten both legs. Keep that front knee playful. Exhale, hinge. And finding triangle first, all right? Press those shoulders back. Remember, you want to feel like you're pressed between two pieces of glass. You don't want to feel like you're leaning forward and the hips are poking out. You want to feel pressed back. Press away from whatever you're touching with your right hand. Feel your right side body fire up in the rib cage. Feel nice and balanced, drawing back to the hip creases. You don't want to feel rounded through that right side body. All right, we're gonna begin to bend that front knee, work our way to half bow. Yes, we'll still be doing Bird of Paradise, don't worry. Um, I'm sorry, half moon here. And then if you want to find your half bow, feel free to. All right, bending that knee. Just twisting it up, getting the body nice and open here. All right, we'll open up to half moon and reach it back. Three or two. <sighs> Have a nice exhale. Now we'll hinge forward into extended side angle, right arm to the thigh, reach that left arm past your ear. Your right hand is active. Use that right forearm to press away from the leg. And really peel yourself open. Keep that front knee bent. Remember, you can always stay back off, but just be mindful wherever you move. Left arm behind. Give the shoulder a roll. Press the shoulders back. Leaning forward. If you need your towel, the towel goes in your left hand, and you reach that right arm up under the knee. Press the shoulders back. We want to try to find ourselves pressed through a piece of glass here, too, if it's available. All right? And then we'll look forward, lift the back heel, and step the back foot forward. Come to your right big tippy toe, shift to your left foot, and slowly round it up. Hug those arms in. Woo. Lift from the heart once you get up. Maybe begin to extend that right leg. Don't hop around too much on your rounded leg. You don't want to pull anything. And take your time when you come down, and you step it back. To the warrior two leg, the bind, and then inhale it up, warrior two. Take your time, you know where we're going. Vinyasa when you're done, okay? Have fun, spend some time there. Enjoy the pauses with your breath, even when you step it back to the bind. Find the space there, enjoy the pause. Just getting a little sit there. Nice, and we'll all meet you down, dog. And I am doing my right leg again on purpose just for one thing. We'll inhale right leg to sky. Exhale, bend that knee. And maybe flip your dog. Oh, yeah. Press through those heels. Squeeze the glutes. Back bend it out. Wheel it if you can. Breathe. Smile. Look back. Reach. Inhale. Right leg to sky. Exhale, release it down. Inhale, left leg to sky, and exhale, slowly set that foot outside your left hand. Yes. Front knee over ankle, slide that back foot back as far as it'll go. Lower the knee down. And when you come forward, maybe track that knee to the side. Exhale, take the hips back, toes point up. Inhale, round it forward. Many waterfalls here through the spine, too. Enjoy utilizing the whole body. Nice. 
eyes. Recognize once again, movement, stillness, forward or back, splits. Just have fun feeling your body and stretching and enjoying the moment. So many closed off spaces with our bodies lately since we're not having all the options out there getting out and about. So if you're able to walk and get outside, that's awesome. Any kind of movement, right? About two more breaths here. Movement or stillness. Once again, if you're in splits, take your time, but we're coming to lizard. Tracking forward with that knee to the side and with an exhale down to the forearms if it's available or on the blank or block. Even tracking to the right, you can relax those fingers and your wrists and just breathe. It's even nice to surrender the head, but if you need to keep activation anywhere just to feel secure or balanced, do so. Just don't. Let it be over activation, like squeezing the hands and the fingers. Yes, recognize when it's unnecessary tension or activation. My front toes, my left toes are still open, protecting that knee joint. About two more breaths. And on our next inhale, we'll slowly walk it on up. Bend that right knee, flex the foot, inhale, reach that left arm forward, exhale, take it up and back, keep the toe side, or reach or roll the left thigh away from you. Maybe look up and back, towards your right, Ooh, I feel that. I'll just lower my hip a little more, Not too much. Nice. So we'll slowly unwind that left arm, curl our back toes under, lift the back leg, and spin our back heel down sideways. Look for that heel to heel, heel to arch, bend that front knee, reach the right arm forward, and on an inhale, windmill it up, one or two. All right. So, tracking that front knee, feel that right hip open up, roll to the outside edge. So this is a good time too, if any of you have a smaller mirror, that you can also bring into your practice and like set it up off to the side where you can see like whether you're like this or this and just get that visual awareness but don't get caught up in watching yourself move. Utilize it for just some alignment techniques. Maybe deep in the lunge, feel yourself reach, balance, hand to hand, shoulder soften. Breathing, breathing, breathing. Left hand to sky, exhale back, peaceful warrior. Maybe once again, bend one elbow or both. But lift from the heart, keep that front knee nicely bent. And we'll inhale it up, warrior two, straighten both legs. Maybe shorten that distance at the feet. Hinge, triangle pose. Press away from what you touch. Feel your shoulders press back. All right, so this is another one where the mirror would be good. Feel the head press back. Do not look back at the body. Lengthen through the throat. Yes, so you should be looking to the side or straight down or up, but not back towards the body. Feel the legs hugging. Feel your left side body fire up. Yes, feel the rib ribs draw back to the hip creases. All right, maybe the arm stays up. Maybe it doesn't. It might come to the hip as you bend your front knee and slowly shift forward to half moon, maybe spider fingers on the floor. Keep looking down, feel the lifted leg strong, and once again, try to feel yourself press through two pieces of glass. There you go, that's it, Kelly. Keep lifting that leg, Kelly, keep it active. Yeah, try to just, yeah, there you go. Feel the space. If anybody wants to bend that knee in the air and seek their half bow, feel free to. Nice, keep lifting the leg, Kelly, don't let it drop, yes. There you go, nice. All right, and then we'll slowly take it back. Warrior two. <laughs> Exhale, hinge forward. 
All right, I, I'm watching you guys. I should be doing two. Hinge forward, then we'll find our extended side angle. Peel it open, press away. Exhale, take that arm behind, give the shoulder a roll. If you need the towel, it's in your right hand now. And then we'll lean forward, seek that bind, try to press the shoulders back through between two pieces of glass. You're looking up if you can. Then look forward, step that right foot forward. Slowly begin to round it up. Woo. Press the shoulders back, hug those upper arms, lift from the heart. Maybe extend the leg. Are you doing Bird of Paradise twice, Ryan? You are. <laughs> and we'll take it back as controlled as you can. Yes. Inhale it up, warrior two. No hurries. Just move with your intention, your breath, your fluidity and control. Nice. Nice exhale, let it go. Wait till I just get a feeling that everybody's in down dog. Hips up and back, really feel yourself telescope from your fingertips to your shoulders to your hips. We'll be taking our hands back, whether you walk sneaky like a cat or begin to just drag yourself back, lifting from the hips. Inhale, look forward and find space. Once you get there and exhale, fold into your surrender. All right, bend your knees a little extra. Let those arms hang to gravity and let's slowly round it up. And give our shoulders a little roll. So we were warming up to work towards Bird of Paradise, really finding the space, but also working towards standing Utahita Hasta Parambustana, hand to foot pose, okay. All right, so great. Um, maybe come off your carpet or your mat. All right, so we're gonna spend a little extra time here um, crossing the body. So remember, Elbow is going to be inside the knee, not outside. That's going to make it harder. Right hand to hip, shift to your right foot. Let's slowly begin to lift our left knee. Elbow inside the knee. You might find, once again, that calf, ankle, big toe, or outside the pinky toe side of the foot. Press your grounded foot, press your shoulders back. And then maybe begin to extend your left leg forward. Reach through the heel. Maybe take your right arm wide and begin to extend that leg out to the left. Try not to round too much through your left side body. Lift and lengthen. Draw that left hip crease down. Bring the leg forward. You can bend the knee. And now bring your right hand outside the foot, ankle or calf. And then we're going to take our left arm wide as we extend the leg forward and draw it across the body. If any of you has a forward fold practice onto that leg, feel free to. And we'll bring it back. And we'll release it down, maybe leg long first, a few pulses, and then lower it down. Woo! Yeah. Feel that in my right leg. Yes. That's good. All right, so just shake it off. You know, release the tension. Then left hand to hip. Already engaging, stabilizing. And we'll shift to the left foot and lift the right knee. My foot is flexed. Right elbow inside the knee. Find your hand placement on the right. Begin to press through that left foot. Telescope it open. And then slowly begin to extend. It's okay if the knee doesn't straighten. That's your range, your space. Maybe begin to fly the left arm. Take the leg out to the right. Draw that right hip crease down. Feel that right side body open up more. Bring it forward, maybe bend the knee, maybe not, as you extend that left hand to the foot. Right arm wide as we extend the leg forward again, and then maybe draw it across the body. Lift from the heart, feel the shoulders pressing back. Nice. Once again, if you have a forward fold on that leg, feel free. We'll draw it back forward, maybe pulse the leg a few times, no hands. Release it down. Ooh, nice. All right, so no work to getting here today. We're coming to our, um, let's find a forward fold real quick. Let's inhale our arms up. Exhale, take our hands behind interlacing. Squeeze those fingers, hug the upper arms, lift from the heart, soften the knees, exhale, fold. Bend the knees a little extra at first. Let the shoulders and the back have a moment to acclimate. 
And then maybe begin to straighten the legs more. Yeah. So trying, as always, not to come into your full edge right away. You know, bending those knees at first, letting other parts acclimate is so beneficial. Any kind of movement or stillness. Always drawing the nose around is one of my favorite things, releasing tension from the neck. Hands to lower back first, then let those arms straight to gravity. Always a sweet transition. And from here, working into our Velocity Squat. Okay, sitting on my blanket, just a little bit here. Feet nice and wide, round it down, hands together. Inhale, telescope, open the spine. Remember, don't always just crank those legs out to the side with the elbows. You're putting pressure on the knee joint as well as mostly the hip joint. So get a nice hug of the legs onto the arms as the arms push. As always, it's a nice active yin and yang movement going on here. And always, you can round and soften, you can twist, or just hang out here and breathe. Wherever you are, breathe and just try to be and feel the pose. Notice what you're feeling, the sensations. Recognize when your breathing drifts out of you. Or maybe you don't even have to focus on it if it just happens naturally. What I'm trying to say is recognize when you're not breathing. That's all. All right. As always, crow or crane. Remember, uh, what some of you have talked about keeping those arms straighter and really getting those knees up into the underarms just to practice with playing with your crane. Of course, playing with your crow too. And if you like, as always, just feet in the crow push ups. Hands forward, they gotta stay flat, so you gotta keep those heels lifted as we lift our hips up, but keep the knees bent deeply. Push-ups as we lift the heels, shift forward, hug the elbows, bend them, touch the back of the arms. Looking down, what does it take, but you're looking forward down, to press up and back, and move forward fluidly with control, feeling the legs and arms work all together as one. Maybe shifting, lifting one foot, then the other. Remember, you can always bring a few couch cushions forward. So in case you do go forward, then your forehead will hit that and you don't have to worry. So being at home does have its advantages for quickly snagging some extra props. If you find some hang time in your crow, really press away from the earth with the hands and try to ball your belly through your spine and feel that puffing through your back. Feel that expansion. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if the screen froze. Nobody was moving. Everyone's holding their pose here. Pretty awesome. All right. So we're going to um, come down to our bellies after this, have a counter pose for that rounding. We're going to do bow. Oh, you awesome here. So for me, I just feel a little in my lower back. I want a, a brief child's pose here. Might even come up on spider fingers again just to press through. That really releases my lower back, but it's just staying rounded and relaxed to you, feel good or rocking around. Find your release. Recognize where you might feel a little cranky because we're going to go into a back bend here. All right, so we're gonna inhale slowly, round it on up, and exhale, come down to our bellies. Okay, give the hips a little wiggle. So we will be doing bow pose, both feet, but if that's too much, as always, you can just come to one elbow and do one side at a time, all right? We will have the opportunity to roll to the side if your surface allows or your space, but also make sure nothing's beside you if you do choose to roll so you don't roll on top of it. So we'll bend our knees, feet are flexed, inhale, reach your arms forward, exhale, take them back outside the feet. Toes are already curled back, work your knees closer together. And on an inhale, lift heart and legs, hug those thighs and breathe. So very dynamic here, very slowly with your inhales, maybe lift a little higher. On your exhale, don't lower any lower than where you began. And begin to feel that in the belly. Love to think that we're getting some internal organ massage here. Any of you has a therapy ball, 
small, bigger than a softball, but smaller than a soccer ball. It can be as soft or as firm as you like. Let me tell you, you feel it there when you lay on it. If it's available, inhale and exhale, roll to one side. And just soften, it just becomes a nice shoulder stretch, takes a little bit of the back bend out. And just kind of relax into that right shoulder or whatever shoulder you meant to. And we'll inhale, come up, pause, and then exhale, maybe take it to the other side. Woo. Yeah. Beautiful. And then we'll take it over again, lift, release it out, hands by the heart. Exhale, press it up to a modified plank, inhale. And now exhale, sink the hips back, but drag your fingers. We're gonna come up seated on our heels. Drag your fingers, tuck the chin a little. And now drag them slowly. Beautiful, give your shoulders a little roll. All right, let's see where we are time-wise. Okay, let's go on to our back for a nice little spinal twist and then our shavasana, okay? All right, so if any of you has a preference to a spinal twist, just go there, shut me out. Surrender that hip and V, all right? Otherwise, we'll do our feet as wide as our mat, arms wide, maybe do a few windshield wipers side to side with our knees. Our feet wide are very um, different. It goes deeper into the psoas, okay? We get some deeper stretching into the IT band. Next time you take your knees to the right, keep them there. You might choose to stack your left knee on top of the right or keep that left foot wide and stack your right heel onto that left thigh. You might need to place a blanket up or block up under your right thigh or your left knee if it's high. If your left knee is real far off the floor, you might need some support under that joint. If it's available, look to your left. You might place a blanket up under your left shoulder or right shoulder if it needs some support. But breathe. Soften your gaze, let go of the distractions, the external eyesight, and go inside with the internal eyesight, observing where maybe you feel it stretch, recognizing if it's too much, you can open the toes, that can help a little bit with the knees, but if it's causing too much tension on the knee joints, maybe just unstack the right foot. Yes. And breathe. Do you feel this maybe through your left hip, somewhere along your right leg, as well as that left thigh? How many places can you feel this? Once again, supporting the left knee with a blanket, just take time to do these little prop adjustments so you can soften and surrender without the distraction of tension. When you're ready, just unstack your right foot if you have it. Knees come up, feet on the floor, lift your hips, recenter. Maybe a little movement. Setting up your next side if you're doing the windshield wiper one. Take the knees to the left. Keep the right foot wide, maybe off the mat. And then maybe lift the left heel onto that right thigh. Once again, maybe taking a moment. Yes. I didn't do this on the other side, but if you're really deep here and your right foot comes more towards the hip, you can reach your right hand for that right foot for cattail. That's what it's called, cattail. And breathe. If you haven't already, if it's available, look opposite your knees, let the neck join this party, twisting all the way up the spine here in different directions. But if it creates tension, Look up or look to the left. Feel anything? Just find a little softening or a little more space anywhere. Slowly unwind. Remember, lift those hips, recenter. Recognize what you might need, whether it's hugging it in, massaging it out first. I didn't offer up happy baby, so if happy baby really makes you happy and just is one of those completions, I realize now I didn't flip our dog on our left side, so that's your homework after class. <laughs> Since I switched up my sequence, it really changed it a bit. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, that's okay. Y'all can still do it and find that joy afterwards. When you are ready, I want you all to begin to open up to Shavasana, making sure you're supported. I hope um, each of you can hang till the end of the class. I just want to chat a minute with you after class. All right. But when you're ready, settle into your Shavasana. Going to bring some different awareness maybe to some of you today. All right. So once you get there, of course, point your big toes in towards one another. Allow them to flop out. Get that jello jiggle wiggle through the thighs and the hips. That self, it's very self-serving here to just release that instant tension, that, that, that little playful movement brings. And before we soften our jaw, when your eyes are closed, just visualize your space around you. You know you're intimate with your space around you. Visualize it. You feel like you're in your own little cocoon here. You're in a secure, safe place here. And now we'll bring our awareness to our mouth. And allow your lips to part generously. Yes, beautiful. Wherever you choose to spend Shavasana, whatever shape. Just feel the tension melt away. And now you're visualizing your internal space. Watching it melt piece by piece. Feeling maybe the life energy of this oxygenated blood cleansing and detoxing the body. But truly bringing that life energy within. Just like in class, if there's any sounds, from any surrounding sounds, they walked in and away like a cloud. So we're going to gently begin to awaken our breathing and just, just enjoy feeling the energy, the awareness of breathing brings. It's so fun. Tuning in and, you know, if yoga's been a journey for you, just recognizing the awareness of levels that you have now breathing over where you began in your practice. It's an awesome awareness. You might begin some internal movement or external movement, fingers, toes, or internal, just breathing deeper, focusing your breath in certain areas along your energy lines or chakras. If you like a long body stretch. Oh, enhance to heart center. Remember, bringing that, sealing it into our heart, looking in each day, what you can be grateful for in the moment. What are you doing today that is productive and fruitful? And who are you reaching out to, to maybe just give them a smile and let them know you're thinking about them, okay? Namaste.